Well, hello everyone. Uh, today I am pleased to welcome someone uh, to our video who is a coach within the game uh, and is also uh, a coach within the elite level of the women's game uh, and is also an international power chair referee with a wealth of uh, tournament experience. Uh, nice to say hello to Steve Crump. Steve, hello, how are you doing? Hi, good afternoon, mate. Yeah, it's lovely to see you. Uh, it's been a long time, so uh, I'm all right, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm pretty good, thank you. How have you been over these past few weeks? <laughs> yeah, it's been a, it's been a difficult time, has it, mate? I think like most, it's um, it's ups and it's downs, and it's certainly been nice to spend more time at home with the family. But it's been tough at times as well, trying to get used to things. But uh, probably not as tough as others who you know aren't blessed with a garden or have got children to look after while they're trying to work. So um, adjusting to life, but good really no complaints good man good man well it's great to have you on today so thank you very much for your time really appreciate it um i just want to start off with you because in terms of your uh, background in power chair football you're a little bit different because you don't have an immediate connection to the game so what was it for you and how did you first get involved in power chair football yeah i mean first of all man thanks for reaching out it's um obviously it's been a little bit of time since I've been around for a couple of different reasons. So um, it's just lovely to, to kind of talk about it and <clears throat> involved really. So, uh, so thank you. And um, I think you're right. I'll, you're probably not the first person to call me different by the way, but um, in, in terms of my involvement in the game, it all started when I was quite young really. So um, when I was at, at college, uh, 16, God, that feels a, a long time ago now. Um, I was involved in just a little bit of volunteering with uh, West Bromwich Albion. Uh, and a job came up, which was uh, quite simply a 10 hour a week contract uh, to go into schools and deliver a, a PE session or sports session. So um, I applied for that and was lucky enough to, to get that. And of that contract, two hours a week were with uh, the disability uh, section of the foundation. So not explicitly to, to power share, but um, across visually impaired, blind football, uh, a bit of pan disability as well. So it was... Um, quite a diverse range of, of what I was getting involved in. Um, of that was, was power chair football and probably an hour a week was, was dedicated to it. And, and to be honest, mate, it went quite quickly from there. So just fell in love really fast with the game. It's something that I'd never been around. Um, you know, uh, people who use wheelchairs that often uh, at the young age that I was at. Um, and I just found it incredible that these guys and girls were able to to do what they did and you know it was a very different game back then you know kind of 10 plus years ago and I'll never forget the first competition we went to when we we beat Celtic Storm 31-0 when I was with West Brom um, but then we lost the next game 36-0 to what was uh, I think Tottenham Aspire back in the day so um, absolute roller coaster of emotions that weekend which is uh, which is crazy so um so it all, it all kind of started there for me. And then uh, I was fortunate enough that I, I built a really good relationship with, with Paul Hunt, who I'm sure most of our community will know well. And uh, Paul got me an opportunity to stay on with uh, just purely the disability section within West Brom. So I'm really grateful to, to him and the foundation. And kind of from then, my, my love for the sport just grew. And it, it became a, a really big part of my life. And I'm, I'm really grateful for all the opportunities that the sport's given me, to be honest. And it really has changed a lot, hasn't it, from obviously from when you and I first got involved in the game eight, nine, ten years ago to how it is now. The development's been phenomenal, hasn't it? Yeah, and it's so great to see that, um, you know, these athletes, and that's exactly what they are, are uh, have been able to develop the technology and the skill set to compete at a level that's, um, you know, absolutely amazing to watch and I think anyone that sees the game um, is impressed and amazed by the, the level of ability of our athletes and um, I'm really glad that it's getting the exposure that it deserves. I still think that you know that there's a long way to go and I know you and the WFA did a really good job with that and uh, I'm really excited to see where we are in another 10 years because the growth has been, oh, it's just been amazing hasn't it man? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And obviously Talking to you today about from a, you know your experiences of being a referee, so you've had a wealth of experience from the coaching uh, side of things as well. But what was it that first led you into refereeing? 
You know, it's funny this because just by chance, um, I don't know if you, you listen to, or I'm sure someone will, the, the Peter Crouch podcast. Um, yes, and one of the episodes, of, yeah, <laughs> one of the episodes was um, he was talking about referees, and I think the comment Crouch you made was that who wakes up and wants to be a referee? <laughs> um, no one, I don't think anybody does, and, and that's certainly the case for me. So, um, I think. <laughs> It was kind of needs must at the time, if I'm honest, because, um, you know, back when it all started out, there wasn't too many people that um, wanted to be involved in an official side. It was, you know, generally coaches who were in between games were, were helping out. And I, and I know there's still a lot of our amazing coaches that are playing both roles and the respect levels I've got for people balancing that is, is unbelievable. Um, but at, at that particular period of time, it was... Um, actually part of the regulations that a team had an allocated referee in the league. Yeah. Um, I, I was with the B team with West Brom at the time, um, before it was called the, the Throttles. Uh, um, and I, I was the allocated ref. So it, it was really more by being thrust into it than, than by choice. Um, but what I found, to be honest, is that the more I got involved with that, the more opportunity I had to, um, to kind of influence the game a little bit. Um, and I don't mean making that about the referees at all. I mean, actually setting some standards that were useful and, and really understanding what the players wanted from officials. And, and that gave me a slightly different perspective on the game. Um, and what I would say is it actually helped me an awful lot from the coaching side, as well as um, developing myself as an official. So it was quite beneficial in, in both respects, really. Um, you know, and I'd encourage as many people as possible to and get some experience in that side of it um, to understand perhaps how the players are feeling in those moments and uh, you learn a lot about how to manage their emotions and um, how you can manage the occasion. Um, it's quite character building refereeing as well so um, <laughs> I think you can probably Absolutely. agree with that. It's warm in the middle, uh, <laughs> it certainly gets hot in there but I, I think you know, that, that was the big thing for me, is I had an opportunity to really positively uh, influence what the players wanted. And, and that's always been my priorities. The game is the players. You know, it's not about anybody else. It's mm -hmm. their sport. We need to make it as competitive and elite as possible. Um, and I really enjoyed understanding that from them to try and make as much of a difference. Absolutely. Completely echo what you're saying. So... What do you think then, obviously, with the, the experience that you've had now being a referee and refereeing at a top level, and we'll talk about that in a bit, but what do you think makes a really good referee? What are some of the key attributes or skills that you think a referee needs within the game? There are a lot of things, um, and I think this can sometimes be forgotten with referees. The two things I always focus myself on were fitness and feedback. Um, my fitness, and I think that's one of the key things for me, was that, um, you know, it's so easy and it's difficult in our game because we're balancing coaching and we're balancing officials and sometimes we're balancing other yeah. duties as well, such as, you know, the cafe and all sorts. For me, it was about your warm-up correctly. Um, am I in good physical condition to run a couple of miles every 40 minutes? Uh, to be in the position that the players need for me to make the best possible decision? Um, so fitness was a big part for me and, and I'm certainly not preaching to be the most fit person on earth, but um, my fitness levels I always kept a good eye on. Um, and in terms of feedback, that came from a number of different ways um, and something that I felt that was really interesting listening to, to your chat with um, John Bolden last week or so was um, I took on a similar stance. So I watched a lot of my games back where possible. Um, which was difficult as a referee because people are filming the game. Um, but I'd watch those games back to understand how was my positioning? How was I feeling in that moment? Why did I make that decision? Was it right or wrong? So I think re I really agree with John on that point that um, taking that accountability to get some feedback yourself on your own performance is absolutely massive. and That's going to help you improve what you can deliver next time. I think even more crucially, the feedback from the players and my peers, I was relentless in asking for that. Um, if I'd had a good game, a bad game, and I think you can probably vouch that I'd probably talk to you straight after a game when I shouldn't sometimes. Yeah. Um, you know, 
if, if you've not won a game and I'm coming saying, how did I do? It probably doesn't go down too well, but tricky moments. Uh, but what I would say is that feedback was absolutely massive. Um, yeah, listening to the players about, I don't understand this is how I've seen it, what have you seen? Because, you know, particularly when you think about contact decisions, where you stand can make such a huge difference on how you see a, a contact decision. Um, particularly now with the tribe board chairs, they're so fast that you really need to take your time over that and, and understand. So that, that was really important to me. But the thing that I mentioned that is probably most forgotten about with officials is empathy. And the one thing I've always tried to do as an official is um, to not lose my personality and character. So um, I've tried to have that connection with the players. There are times they need telling because they know they're getting away with things. Um, but there's a time actually where things aren't um, quite as they seem and you need to manage the situation. Or it's quite easily for emotions to spill in our game. So um, having that connection with the players. And, and it's as subtle as things like remembering their names at the speed tests to try and make them feel less nervous or whatever it might be. Um, and just understanding the players that you're with and certainly not to build a perception understand how you can help them in that moment because what I wanted to see as an official was an amazing game of football I've got the best view in the entire you know, arena to watch this game of football so what I didn't want is losing emotional control and getting into a position where I might have to make a decision um, whether they leave the game or whatever it might be so um, it's really having that personal connection uh, I, I I'd like to think that was one of the things that helped me um, to achieve some of the things that I have in the game. Super. Yeah, I think, and I'm privileged enough to be able to see that firsthand in terms of whether it's being a coach on the side or being uh, as part of the, the refereeing team alongside you in that, you know, maintaining that positive relationship with the players, you know, pre-game, during game and after the game really good positive and, and consistent communication during the game around you know the, the things that are doing well or just giving them little say you've got to be careful now and that type of thing whereas it just keeps the game flowing and you haven't got to worry about having to to stop and start things and it just makes sure that as you say it's the player's game and they can you're going to get a full 40 minute game in with ideally you know, nice and smooth and no problems so i can completely uh, echo what you say and I think that's uh, some, some great tips that you've given there for what makes a decent referee so thank you for that. Oh, my pleasure. How do you see the game and the, you know, the officiating side of the game moving forward do you think over the coming years what would you like to see coming in and obviously I know we've talked um, before uh, uh, around kind of uh, getting more people in uh, different people from different backgrounds into the game so and what would you like to see for us going forward? Yeah, I think that's a great question, Maka. Uh, there's, there's a couple of things really, and it's perhaps easy for me to say, having um, not been around for the, the last year or so, um, is first of all, I think we need to get the right people in. You know, um, that can sometimes be a challenge, getting numbers in to, to support uh, a sport that people aren't familiar with. Um, and I think for a number of reasons, we need to focus on that too. Firstly, um, get some experienced officials that will be focused purely on that job. I think I've, we've both mentioned this. There's a, a balancing act at the moment within our community that I've got a, an enormous amount of respect for where they're balancing roles as a coach and, and officials. And in the future, I know we'll get to a point where coaches can focus on coaching and officials can focus on officiating. I think that's the first thing for me. I think the second thing is I'd love to see, um, like you said right at the beginning, I'm a little different because I, I didn't have a, uh, a family member or a, a friend or anything involved in the game. When I got involved, it was completely new to me. Um, I think what I'd love to see now is see more people like that come through. Um, I'd love to see um, more representation um, from BAME and also from female backgrounds that uh, can come and get an opportunity within our game to, to really develop themselves, get some unbelievably fulfilling experiences, um, you know, and also test themselves because, you know, managing the running game and different sports is different to you know, to, to looking after our game. So I'd really love to see when we do get those right people in to take 
uh, the game forward, but actually there's some diversity uh, within that as well. Yeah, absolutely superb. I suppose in linking to that, what would you say to an outsider if they've never refed the game before and they want it, if they're maybe interested in getting involved, but they're not sure, you know, what could you say to maybe sell it to them to maybe take the plunge? You know, I think it's a hard thing to say, but it's an easy thing to show. Um, everyone that I've showed clips of this game loves it. And I'll give you a great example. My wife hates football. Absolutely never work, would never want to go to a game with me. Doesn't enjoy when I watch it at home, but absolutely loves power chair football. Um, you know, so when the games are live streamed, we'll sit and watch them on the big screen together now. Or we watch a bit of the Champions Cup like that. The World Cup obviously was live streamed as well. Um, and the whole family was around. So when I was in Florida, um, we had the whole family around coming to watch games of power chair. I think for me, it's showing people uh, what the game's about. I think when people see, they're, they're incredibly impressed by the level of uh, professionalism that they see from the players, the level of skill, certainly. And I think what I would say to people is, um, come and test yourself. You know, it's, um, it's not easy, but the reward is incredible. Um, you're going to get an experience working with different kind of people. That's going to open your mind um, and give you a different perspective. You're going to come and have a positive um, impact on on a sport that really needs some support from an officiating perspective in the long term. Um, and you know, I think my story is is quite a nice one to share in some ways because the, the day that I got involved in power chair football, within seven years, I got to uh, a very very high international level. So opportunities for people to achieve are there as well. Um, so a bit of show, I think, to, re to recap, and then. Um, and I was really sad that the opportunities there for, for people that aren't involved. Yeah, brilliant, absolutely. But as you say, obviously, you know, that pathway to an elite level uh, of refereeing is shorter. So we talk about that now. What was your uh, first experience of uh, international competition? My, f my first international, so I guess. I'm going to roll back just to before then. So back in 2011 uh, was the the first, well, the second World Cup, I think. Um, it was out in Paris. Um, and I went to that as a fan. And I think that was my first experience of, of the game internationally. Um, and I don't know if you were there, actually, but what an unbelievable competition that was. The atmosphere, um, the, the level of play was just incredible. And I've got to be honest, when I got home from that competition, I was more inspired than I can remember being with almost anything in life. Um, that's what really cemented that I wanted to, to make a difference in the game. From there, um, my next, the next year, actually, I had uh, some involvement with the Champions Cup, which was also in Paris. I think it was 2012, maybe 13. Um, where I went out, but I wasn't a, a fit for referee at that point. So it was interesting because I'd been selected to go and, and support the, the officials team. And it was a disappointing competition personally for me because I didn't get to center any games. Um, but actually that's how I felt in the moment. But as the years have gone by and the experiences have come, I really appreciated that opportunity not to be thrown in at the deep end. Um, I had the opportunity to assist plenty of games and I was fourth official for a number as well. And um, although I was disappointed at the time, um, and Martin will tell us that, um, we had a few conversations, but the experience actually really helped me um, to get to see different cultures play, be really close to the action. Obviously, there's language barriers internationally, um, mm -hmm. so there needs to be a level of understanding there. And, and that's where it comes back to my point earlier around keeping that connection with players. A um, bit more difficult internationally. Um, but, but yeah, that, that competition, um, I think it was 2013 in Paris, was a, a real eye-opener because the standard was high and the pressure was, was higher, to be honest, um, particularly on what we felt from my first experience. But, yeah, it was amazing. And I really, really appreciated that it, I wasn't thrown in the deep end, to be honest. Absolutely. And I suppose then if we go from not being thrown into the deep end to the deep end, you know, the thing that 
is unique about you as a power chair referee in England is that you're the only official to have uh, refereed the WFA Cup final and a power chair World Cup final as well. So let's talk about, you know, Florida in 2017. Before we talk about the final, what are your kind of overall memories of, of the competition as a whole and, and how things progressed, you know, uh, up until the final? You know, I think, first of all, it was um, an incredible event. I think everyone involved done an amazing job. The venue, the outstanding, the coverage was like phenomenal. There was English and French translation, which was amazing to see. So I think it's been our best World Cup. And it's really, we're starting to see the standard of uh, professionalism and and certainly level of competition increase. Um, I think one of the things that really stuck out for me with Florida was how some of the nations perhaps people weren't aware of, Uruguay, Argentina, how competitive and how much they developed in such a short space of time. And I remember the, um, the Argentina-Uruguay game that um, a, a good friend of mine, Doug Wolf, the, one of the officials from America, refereed. And, that was possibly one of the best refereeing performances I've ever seen because the emotion was insane. There were red cards, there were tackles, there were goals, there was, the coach got sent off. and It was incredible. Um, it was an amazing event. So, so I think that's the first thing we should take uh, from that. It was, as a spectacle, it was, it was amazing. Um, obviously, my first World Cup as an official, um, so got to see a, a different side to that was fortunate enough to get some experience with the Nations Cup in Limerick um, back in 2014. And there was a really similar feel behind the scenes in terms of how we prepared ourselves. Um, how it would be in terms of how we talked about the game, setting the standards. Um, and there was the, the level of professionalism through the official team has been remarkable. And what I will say is that the, the network that comes with that, and there's so many to name that I won't name them all, but, um, you know, a confidant of mine is Nico Bali from France, who's just one of the best guys you'll ever meet. And um, having one of your best friends out there with you to support you is just, he, he was amazing, really. Um, I, I think the one thing from Florida that we really appreciated, that, and I've spoken about this earlier, was that we had an opportunity to review our performances there was some video feedback for us as well that we discussed appropriately as a group or reflected on individually. Um, and I think that really allowed us to improve the standard. And I think, I think the standard was improved at that competition. Um, I'm sure coaches will have something to say all of the time, but um, I think we all, we all left Florida feeling like it is the best competition we've had as a group. Of yeah, absolutely. Moving on then. You know, as the, the competition progressed and obviously with, with England, unfortunately going out at semi-final stage, that then yeah. potentially opened the door for an English official to, to centre the final. So talk to me about, you know, when, when you got told, when you got the nod that you were going to centre, the build up to it and, you know, kind of any of the overriding memories that you, you've got of the game because, you know, most of the community will have seen the game by now. It was an absolutely barnstorming game, not without controversy and, and big decisions had to be made, you know, but I suppose take me through kind of the whole, you know, the build up to it and the game itself and kind of just how you, how you felt. Yeah, it's a great question. You know, I've spoke a lot about video feedback and that's the only game I've never watched back. I genuinely have not seen that game back. Um, I'm sure I will at some point, but I haven't. I think the first thing about that experience for me was it was bittersweet um, because a door opened for me because unfortunately, um, obviously England hadn't progressed and I, I was disappointed for some great friends that um, they hadn't reached their goal, which I know was to uh, to win them and certainly play in the final. And they were unlucky. So my first emotion was disappointment for them. Um, Secondly, and I think it goes without saying, you know, when I found out, I found out the, the morning uh, at the final. Um, obviously, I knew there was an opportunity at that point, but there were some outstanding referees from around the world that um, also that door was open to. So 
um, I got told on the morning we got a, like a sheet almost, like a, it's a bit like a team sheet you'd put up on the wall to kind of what happens. Um, so it was in order from the ninth, tenth playoff, progressively down the sheet to the final. So I saw that I was assistant referee for the ninth and tenth and thought, oh, got a game, I'll take that. <laughs> on finals now, that's, that's good. Uh, and as I worked through the list, um, I've just seen my name in big block capitals uh, and the referee next to the final. Um, before I got there, um, Nico jumped on me um, and was kind of hugging me and celebrating uh, with me, to be honest. So um, Nico's <laughs> hug told me everything I needed to know. To um, It was emotional, Maka. It was, um, it was the proudest sporting achievement of my life, um, you know, and even to this day, I'd like to think I've achieved some some really great things um, within the game, and you know, to to be selected to referee the most important game in that sport was it was an honour, um, and I really hope that I did the players justice, and I really hope that my performance was um, was at the standard that it needed to be for that level of competition. Um, the build up to the game was was strange, to be honest, because. Um, obviously, I had involvement in the first game, so straight in, gear on, get involved, can't think about it, I've got a job to do. Uh, it was a good game um, between Canada and, um, I can't recall the other team, excuse me. Uh, really competitive game, so got involved in that. And then there was hours, hours and hours and hours after, where I spent a lot of the day supporting my colleagues. Um, they'd had a great competition and they'd helped me improve through the competition so it was important to me to sit alongside them and support them and continue to do the things that we've done all competition it wasn't until the third fourth playoff that it really hit me um i'd realized that i was up next and i realized that up next was the last game which was the final um and there was a lot of nerves in the build-up you know and I, i've got this um a routine almost where I prepare myself and um, I'd had five minutes with the guys that were with me which was Mark Kerriton from England uh, which fourth official so important that Mark had to mention that he was involved um, Mark's been a brilliant mentor for me um, alongside um, Sebastian and Pablo uh, Pablo obviously now is joint head referee with Martin but I had a little chat with the guys probably midway through the third fourth playoff and I asked them to leave me alone until kickoff, don't talk to me, don't speak to me, don't approach me, leave me alone. We've said what we need to, well, <laughs> in the nicest way. Um, and I spent the next kind of 40 minutes, headphones on, a motivational playlist. And there was a second court that was out of view um, from the cameras, obviously, while the games were on. And I kind of use, I use that time to familiarise myself with the court. And I know that seems perhaps a little bit strange, just look around, get a feel for the crowd um, and just stand around a little bit. So music was loud, focus was in tune. Um, and I was ready. You know, when, when the headphones come off, uh, we're in the changing room, training jacket comes off and then it's, it's game mode. Um, you know, that's when you, you need to get serious and obviously professional. So... Um, but nervous energy was insane. <laughs> I was really nervous. Um, and then the game, you know, we get round to the game and I'd love to say it was like any other game. It wasn't. That was the most difficult game I, I remember ever being an official in, in any capacity for. The pace and intensity was mm. unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and... Uh, you've obviously seen the game back. I, I felt like I was running a hundred metre sprint from behind one goal to the other, to the centre, to the side. And at half time, I sat down and said, I need a break. I need a break. <laughs> I'm chatted. Um, I think when you're in that situation, you're just trying to do your best for the players. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not in tune to what's happening around me in terms of the crowd. Uh, I'm, I'm intent on the players and I'm, I'm really fine tuned to my. Uh, to my colleagues, so with Sebastian, with Pablo on the side, in regular contact and, and talking as best we can through the game. And it was over before I knew it. Um, you know, it just felt like it went really quickly. Um, after the game, obviously, we thought what we needed to, and then back to the changing room. And 
um, a scene I'll never forget really. Um, there was a group of officials there that um, just really supportive. They were all there for me. There were celebrations. I was drenched with water. Um, you know, they were really supportive of me. And, and that's when I could relax. That, that was a lovely moment. Was, um, I could calm. I could just enjoy being with um, friends and colleagues at that point and really just enjoy and soak in what had happened. It, it was an incredible day and one I'll, I'll never forget in, in my life, to be honest. I'm just really grateful for the opportunity. Yeah, I, and I love that because I think, you know, from hearing you just explain that, and that's the first time you've actually really kind of gone into depth with about that to me. I know obviously we've had conversations in the past about it, but, you know, it's like an overview, but kind of the th certainly in terms of the prep beforehand and just kind of trying to get your mindset and just focus on what you've got to do, kind of the, the things that you're saying to me there and that what's jumping out at me is how important it was to you and how you know you've you've made it you almost like professionalized it in a way because you've got so kind of sw switched on and, and focused on the job in hand and yes we are it's a disability sport it's an amateur sport by the nature of it but that doesn't mean that you know the athletes that we support and, and you officiate deserve anything less than the best that you can you can give and the best you can be uh, and that's the biggest thing for me is that the players deserve the best and I'm sure that when I watch that performance back there'll be things that I won't like um, but that that's for me. you know that's just how it is but the players deserve my absolute best performance um, and, and I gave it everything I'm sure there were mistakes and okay no problem we all live and we learn but the players deserve that professionalism and I remember just digressing a little if you don't mind is that um, during my coaching months, I remember a referee um, saying to me, I think we were losing the game 3-0 with a couple of minutes to go. Uh, not in our sport, it was in a pan disability actually. Uh, with a couple of minutes to go, I was moaning that he'd not made a decision. Um, and he said to me, the referee, you're 3-0 down with a minute to go. It didn't matter. And that never left me. It's that it does matter because it's about doing the right thing, you know, Amateur sport or not, my view is that these players don't, be, don't deserve to be called that. Our players are athletes. They're playing the highest level of their sport. And I don't think anyone that could jump in a chair and do what these guys do. The commitment I see is unbelievable. Um, so for me to make a wrong decision is okay on occasion. But to make a decision and not care about the outcome, that, that's not what a good official does. Um, so I think that's a really good point you make about players deserve it and that's who it's about you know it was never about how good a performance I pre it was about actually did I allow the game to be as a good and advert as possible and I really hope that was the case I think many people will actually say that you know, it's been watched so many times that yeah what, what a spectacle to, to showcase the game at the highest level um, and I think that, you know, the players did that incredibly well. But able to do that, they're ably supported so well by yourself. So I think for me, that's a great message to, to leave it on and to end this uh, interview on because, you know, you, you've said it all in that, you know, we, we're here trying to do our best for the players because they are the best at what they do. There's no point us even attempting to have a go and try and replicate because we're never going to get anywhere near um, no. And I think you've you've summed it up absolutely perfectly. So I think, you know, for me, massive thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. And, you, you know, for me, you've given a great insight into what the game means to people, but also what it means to be a referee and for the experiences that you've had. So, Crumpy, for me, thank you very much, Paul. Much appreciated. Thank you for reaching out. I really hope this has some impact on helping someone else get involved. That's, that's the idea. Yeah, superb top man, thank you. Thanks, Mac. I take care.